Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, we got the single filer, Mr. Anderson, not with the W-2 income, but having a business that's flowing from the schedule C to line number eight. Let's look at that flow through. Schedule C on the left, profit or loss from the business is in essence an income statement. Income minus the expenses, the net income flowing into Schedule 1. There it is, line 3, totaling up at the bottom. bottom. Pulling into page 1 of the Form 1040 right there on line number 8. We also know that the Schedule C is going to have self-employment tax. So Schedule C, net income bottom line being used to calculate the Schedule SE self-employment tax, which is calculated at the 14,129 flowing into the Schedule 2. There's the 14,129 here, which is flowing into the 1040 page 2 with the tax, not the income tax here, but the self-employment tax, Social Security and Medicare. We, we then know that half of that amount, going back to the Schedule C, we've got the net income being used to calculate the self-employment tax on Schedule SE. Half of that is going to be deductible as an above-the-line deduction. So we took half of that 14,129,7065 deductible on Schedule 1, page 2, which is going to be uh, adjustments to income. There's the 7065 flowing into the form 1040 and we see it here on line 10 bringing us down to the adjusted gross income of the 92,935 standard deduction which is a standard amount for the standard deduction whether business or not and then we've got the qualified business income deduction we're reliant on the software to calculate that for now and that gives us then the taxable income 63,988 we're mirroring that over on our worksheet over here. 100,000 pulling in from the Schedule C. Adjusted gross adjustments to income gives us the AGI standard deduction. Business uh, qualified business income deduction gets us to the 63,989. We're a dollar off. That's okay. Page two calculating the income tax 9,692 plus the self employment tax gets us to the total tax 23821 we're going to imagine that we made payments of 30,000 bottom line 6179 okay so now let's imagine that uh, we go to the schedule c over here and we're going to go into an example of disposing of business property now note that when you look at the normal income statement down here as you're uh, making purchases or doing business if it's an expense, then of course, we're just gonna record an outflow of cash, for example, as an expense like advertising, like uh, you know, possibly insurance or you know, the phone bill, utilities and so on are gonna be down here. But if we purchase something that's a piece of equipment, we then may have to capitalize the equipment and record depreciation. So let's first look at that. And then we will say, well, what if we dispose of some of that equipment then we might have a gain or loss on the disposition and that's where our main focus is now. So let's just put a piece of equipment on the book so we can see how that kind of works. We're gonna say this is gonna be depreciation and let's just call it equipment. I'm just gonna say equipment number one, just a generic equipment form. It's gonna to go to the form schedule C, the category, let's say it's gonna be uh, furniture and fix, let's say it's machinery. I put machinery and equipment the date placed in service. Let's do this one for this year, 03-22-23. Let's, I'm sorry, let's say 06-15. Let's do it. Do it 02-15-22 in the current year we're, the tax year we're working on. The cost or basis, let's say it was uh, 50,000, let's say. And we're gonna say the method that's gonna be used will be Let's do five years makers. We might get into the useful lives uh, later, which would be categorized by the piece of equipment. But, I'm, but right now I'm just gonna do this for an example so we can look at the disposition of an equipment. 
So I'm going to say this is going to be makers five years. Is that what I pick five years? That's the auto limits. I just want to say makers five years office equipment. Let's do that without the auto limits. And then when we calculate that out, it's going to be pulling over here. Now notice it's going to be take, it took some special depreciation. That's why it still pulled the full 50,000 here, but we didn't pull it in by just putting it on the, the, uh, Schedule C as just basically an expense right off the bat, but instead still had to capitalize it and use the depreciation rules, which still may allow us to depreciate it all uh, in one year. So in other words, if I go back to this depreciation schedule here and I look at the regular view, this is our depreciation. I know it's a little small, but you've got the date acquired, the, the uh, cost or basis, and then it took the special depreciation allowance of the 50,000, which is why it's still basically giving us the whole thing as if we just expensed it in the current year. But you get the idea that we have to put it on the books as an asset and then apply whatever depreciation rules we have when the government's trying to stimulate the economy. One, one way they do that is try to incentivize purchases of say equipment by allowing you in essence to depreciate it all in the current year. Okay, so now let's imagine we put something on the books uh, for the prior year that would still be depreciating in the, in the current year. So I'm gonna go back on over and let's imagine that I have another piece of equipment. So I'm just gonna call this equipment two, equip, let's say equipment number two so as a generic insert. I'm gonna say the category. I'm gonna say this happened on 0101, let's say two zero. Let's say it's for 25,000 same method we'll get into depreciation methods later just note however if you're taking out a new client that has a depreciation schedule i would recommend first you want to make sure you get the depreciation schedules which sometimes can be difficult because sometimes they're not attached to the returns so you got to make sure you've, you have those and then i would recommend entering the data into the prior year software so we can recalculate the depreciation for the prior year to match the current tax return to make sure you have everything lined up and then roll it over into the current year. But in any case, we'll get into depreciation methods more in the future. 